Hello everyone, this is Cindy and I'm ready to start up again on the group of tags. A group of tags, we're going to start with number 71 and I'm calling it embossing on a tag. And there's a couple of ways you can emboss. Here's an old-fashioned way. This is an old-fashioned scrapbooking tool from the very beginning days. And basically you just put your paper between there, gave it a good hard squeeze and, oops, sorry, you could um, get an embossed image on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. The problem with this was is that it's hard to line it up and I didn't put a little mark there. And also it takes a lot of force. But anyway, it still works. Another way is just to use some sort of embossing folder. And I don't have any of the big fancy ones, but I do have this one from a long, long time ago. I don't know if any of you guys remember this machine called the Quick Cuts. It, you put this metal piece in there and then uh, just push down with everything you've got and it will on this case it will emboss this shape uh, the most of the dies that come with it are cut shapes and these are made to emboss a cut shape it's not necessarily made to emboss a whole piece of paper like I did here because once again you can only go so far up and it's hard to line up but anyway I did get it to work but you know there's all sorts of embossing folders out there and you can emboss tags and they're great there's also embossing with powders and um, embossing powder and heat gun and um, my daughter used to do this a long time ago and I thought well I'll give it a try so here's my attempts and um, the thing about it is you have to get a good stamp image and you also have to be able to not smudge it here's what you use you use um, embossing pad and basically you can see this is old we've had it forever basically it's sticky and the embossing powder is going to stick to it. So you just got to line up your image. And I have used this little card. I showed earlier in a video how I made those with my um, paper cutter, my paper punch. And I just took a fold of scrapbook paper and lined it up in there and just made sure the, the uh, edge of the paper didn't go all the way to the end of the cut. And then when you cut it, it doesn't cut that fold and it makes a little booklet. So that's what we're attempting to emboss here. And you can see the shape has kind of got this little sticky on it. And we're going to put the embossing powder on it. And it's a lot like glitter. It's small, fine particles, and it goes everywhere. So you want to make sure you have a piece of paper below your project to collect all your pieces. And then we'll put that back in there later. But we won't take the time right now. So anyway, then you take a heat gun and hit it with some heat. And I get too close to that little pile of the melt it. I don't know if you can tell from there. I'll try to lift it up. It's going to melt those particles and make them like plastic. And it leaves a raised image on your paper. So basically, to me, that's what embossing is, somehow getting a raised image on your uh, paper. And of course, you would probably do a better job of stamping and not getting excess powder all over it. But anyway, that's the idea, number 71, of using embossing powder, or embossing on a tag. All right, 72 is taking a tag that you've covered with book page and adding some sort of element on it. I've added lace on this one. This is a um, rub-on, and here's some washi tape. So, pretty uh, simple project. And this is a um, old, old rub-on I thought I'd use to show you how they we can do that. And the best way for me of, of to doing it is just take a pencil and go over the image. I've tried with popsicle sticks and they just don't work as well. And I'm not sure you can still buy Robones. I, I bet they're out there somewhere. But these are just some I've had in my stash forever. And I bet most people have some as well. So anyway, that just puts the rub on on a book page. So that's idea number 40, oh, not 40, 72. Book page covered tags with some sort of little embellishment on there. All right, 73 is what I'm calling 
easy tags, found tags, just things you can make out of objects you find. For instance, here is a date due slip that was in the back of a um, book that I bought. And since it's blank on the back side, it makes a great journaling card. You could back it onto something to make it a little stiffer if you wanted to. You can use a uh, card like this one. It's a Hobby Lobby one. I uh, know Hobby Lobby. <gasps> Holly Hobby, I think is what it's called. Anyway, it's card bookmarks. They make great tags or journaling cards because most of them are blank on the back side. And these are just two I picked up at our public library. You can use a notepad, and this is just one I've gotten in the mail. And I can just slip that in a pocket, and it's already ready to go. The next thing is like um, scorecards that you get from games. This one has got writing on both sides, uh, image, you know, on both sides, but you could back it onto something else if you wanted to play. But that's ready to slip into a card. Here is a thing that came with a CD that you could make and put your own music on and it's got places to write. And of course it has that on the back, but you could cover that up with something if you wanted to. Here are um, receipts, I'm not sure what you call these things, tag receipts or whatever, from like buying something. We bought eight of them for 25 cents or it's $2. So it was kind of flimsy and getting a little torn, so I just backed it onto some old paper. And then here's one, too, is something I bought, wrapping paper and yarn and napkins and a dress. Oh, yeah, it was an estate sale. And, you know, it could be backed on something or just left plain. And here's some old Walmart ones where we bought, look at this, seven and a half yards of something, 44 cents for $3.30. So um, that's the carbon copy of it. So either one of those could be put on the back of something. Here's some play money that, this one I did back already onto some uh, coffee stained um, paper. So that's kind of fun. Put a $100 bill on someone's junk journal. These are the title page of a book that um, is pretty much blank. So those can be folded up and put in a book. And here is another page from a book that's, you know, dividing it up and there's no writing on the back or no writing there. So it's easy ones to do. So, and another thing you can use is post-it notes. And see, this one is a pretty simple image and you can either uh, just take one of these off and stick it onto a piece of stronger paper and then cut around it. And then you've got your cute little journaling card. Or you can just glue two of these together and then peel them off the um, pad. And then all you have to do on the back, where it's sticky, is just take a little bit of um, cornstarch and just rub it over that where it was sticky. And that makes it no longer sticky and it's also kind of white so you don't see it. So anyway, those are just some, way, uh, some different things that you might find laying around that would make a cute little journaling card. Alright, idea 47, why do I keep saying 40, goodness, 74 is making a tag out of chalkboard duct tape. This is a roll of duct tape, and here it is, that was chalkboard, and you can just write on it, and then it wipes right off. And the thing about it is, it's not very wide, so my tag I made was pretty narrow. But I could have butted two pieces up together or overlapped them or something if I wanted to. But that's just, you can write a message on there, include some chalk, and that's a cute little way to make another, a different journaling card. Now on this one, I found this at a yard sale, and it's 25 cents. <laughs> There's the price on it. It was originally $10, and it says on there, some can company, chalkboard surface. And when I first looked at it, I thought, it just feels just like paper. I don't see any difference from paper. But when I took a piece of chalk and just tried to write on a piece of paper like this one, it writes pretty easy, but it doesn't erase very easy. And see on this one, which I use some of that red on, I can write on it pretty easy and it erases much better. So anyway, you might be on the lookout for some of that. I don't know if they still make it or not, but you just never know. And this is just a tag. I put some scrapbook paper on one side and that chalkboard paper on the other. And I'll include some chalk wherever I put it. And it is a different type of tag, chalkboard tag. All right, 75. 
is one that's a tag that you can make out of a greeting card. Here's one I cut from a, I'm sure it was a Christmas card I got a couple years ago. It says Happy New Year. And I just trimmed around it. You can kind of see on some part of it where I had my ink, where I traced around it, another tag. So that makes a great tag. You just put a tassel in the end and you're ready to go. Here's an old greeting card. And if you open it up, there's writing where the flowers are at. But I was thinking, you know, you could cut it along these lines and then glue this down. And that would just make a real pretty, if I can give you an idea, tag right there. So that's an old greeting card. So maybe or maybe not, I would do that. Here's one that's uh, not very old, but it's it could work. And you just come up with something to cover up that uh, the words. And you got all these butterfly images around. So you can just cut off the back and you have a neat little journaling card. Here's an old one that's got a train image on it. I would probably just cut that writing off and use that train image in my um, journal. And if you can tell, that's been embossed. That train has been. So there's some embossing on a, a journaling card. Here's another old card. And it's got a frame. And then you open it up and there's the picture. But you could just glue this frame down, and then it frames that uh, pretty picture. And then just use this, see, as your journaling card. And then here's one I just included in this girl. Somehow you could cut around her a little bit and use her. And then here's one, a card I got from my sister, and I just love this. To me, this is beautiful for including in a botanical junk journal. And if you keep turn inside here, there's another perfect image to cut out and make a tag with. I just haven't cut it yet because it's so pretty. I just haven't wanted to do it yet. But anyway, that's idea 75 uh, to use um, your old reading cards. And let's do one more. Um, 76 is circle tags. And once again, going back to my favorite punch, which is this three inch scallop circle punch. I just cut out a basic shape. Then I cut out another one with scrapbooking paper and just um, glued it on there and then decorated it up. These pumpkins were cut with this machine. When I was digging it out, I said, I saw those pumpkins and I thought, oh yes, I remember having the pumpkins. So then I just put a little lace there and a raffia. Um, tie on it so it makes a cute little round tag and this one is some wrapping paper onto a manila folder and I just added a butterfly and this one is one I just put some of this green paper and then just it's an actual no it's not it's not an actual stamp it's a part of a postcard I printed out and I love the colors together so I just cut out the stamp part of it and glued it on this round tag Another idea I've done with the round um, punch is layer three different sizes. I have a scallop for the three inch, a scallop for the two, and then the two and a half is not a scallop. So I just do the different layers. So this can either be a tag or it could be a tuck spot in a book. So anyway, that's idea 76 and it is round tags. So anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you later. Bye.